today we want to look at molecules their nature and size now let's go to the specific objectives our specific objectives by the end of the lesson student number one will be able to describe an experiment to estimate the size of a molecule and give an estimate of the size secondly you'll be able to state three evidence for saying that the molecules or atoms of matter are in constant motion thirdly you'll be able to state the kinetic theory of matter and finally use molecular theory of matter to explain the three states of matter now remember in our previous class we talked about we talked about matter whereby we define matter as anything that has mass and occupies space and we talked about atom as the smallest indivisible part of matter you probably saw both the direct and indirect evidence for the existence of atom now today we are looking at molecule looking at the nature and size of a molecule now a molecule consists of atoms and we say that atoms are very small particles that means that molecules are also small now you find out that most substances do not exist as individual atoms because they are chemically unstable or reactive as a result of that, these atoms chemically combine with each other or other atoms. They form stable group of particles consisting of at least two atoms that are bounded together. Now, the molecules of an individual substance, they are identical. They're having the same structure, mass, physical and chemical properties. Now, for example, when we talk about the molecule of water, the molecule of water is made of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Now, when we talk about the molecule of nitrogen, nitrogen gas is made up of two nitrogen atoms. So you find out that when we combine two atoms or more, when they are chemically bound together, we have what molecule. Now let's see here. This is a molecule of water consisting of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of what? Oxygen. We have water molecule. Here we have two atoms of nitrogen to give us nitrogen what? Molecule. Now we are talking about the size of molecule. Remember we said that this molecule, they are very, very small. Now the size of molecule is in order of 10 raised to power minus 9 to 10 raised to power minus 10 meter. You can see that the size is very, very small. In terms of centimeter, we have 10 raised to power minus 7 centimeter or 10 raised to the power minus 8 centimeter. So due to its small size, a small amount of any substance will contain a very large number of what molecule. Now, we are going to look at an experiment to estimate this size of molecule. An experiment to estimate the size of molecule. What are the things we need for this simple experiment our apparatus you need a shallow tray that is a tray that is not deep you need water you need bread the bread should be filled with 10 cm cube of your cooking oil the one we call vegetable oil or you can use olive oil then you need your lycopodium powder you can get lycopodium powder where they are selling chemical things now, what are the procedure? Remember, we want to see how to 
get the size of this small echo which I have mentioned. Number one, we fill the shallow tray with water and sprinkle the lycopodium powder on the surface of the water. Now, from this diagram, this is the shallow tray. Now you fill it with water and not filling it to the brim. When you fill the shallow tray with water, then sprinkle that lycopodium powder on the surface of the water. Now, number two, note the level of the cooking oil in the burette and release a very small quantity of oil on the water in the tray. Now, from the new level of cooking oil left in the burette, you can determine the amount of cooking oil that was released. What do I mean by this? As we said, you fill your burette with 10 cm cube of your cooking oil or olive oil. Now, remember you have sprinkled lycopodium powder inside the water in the tray. Now, you release the burette by opening the burette. You have noted the initial volume of the water, which is 10 cm cube. That is V1. Then you open the bread, you allow some small you allow small quantity of the oil inside the tray. Now you close the bread and note the final level of the oil in the bread. Now assuming the initial volume was 10 cm cube, when you have dropped it and the final volume left in the bread was 8 cm cube. Now for us to find the volume. To determine the amount of cooking oil that was released, how do we get that? We will do initial volume of oil in the bread minus the final volume of oil in the bread. So how do we do that? V1 minus V2. So if the initial volume was 10 and the final volume was 8, that means the volume of oil you have dropped in the bread is how many? 2 cm cube. Now, number three, you allow the oil on the water surface to spread and form a thin fin. So once you put that oil in the water, remember there is lycopodium powder there. You find that that oil will form what? A thin fin. Now, it will push the lycopodium powder aside. Now, the next thing is that you measure the diameter of the oil patch in centimeter. How are you going to measure the diameter? You use your meter rule to measure the diameter of that oil patch. Now, when the drop of oil is placed on top of the water surface, it spread out until the thickness of the film is one molecule thick. Now, the thickness of the oil film can be calculated thus. How do we calculate the thickness of this oil film, which is the length of the oil film? Now, remember we found the diameter of the oil film using our meter rule in centimeter, and we equally we have known the volume of the oil film, which we call V, which I gave an example. It can be two cm cube. Now, how will I find the area of the oil film? Remember the formula for area is pi r squared. Now. But we are, we are given diameter. Now, what's the formula that connects diameter and the radius? We find that the radius is half of diameter. That is diameter over 2. That means my area will be pi. Instead of writing radius square, I will write diameter over 2, all squared. That is pi d squared over 4. Now, the thickness of the oil pen will be equal to what? The volume over area volume over area now when you calculate it now to divide the volume with the area accurate experiment will give us the value of 10 raised to power minus 7 cm 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 or in meter 10 raised to power minus 9 meter that is the thickness of the oil film and that is the size of the molecule so the estimated size of a molecule is 10 raised to power minus 9 meter or 10 raised to power minus 7 centimeter centimeter. Now, 
let's look at the evidence or the proof for the constant motion of molecule. Remember when we talked about evidence for the particle nature of atom, we mentioned some of these evidences. But now we want to distinguish the evidence that shows that these molecules, they are in a constant state of motion. Number one evidence is dissolving of solid in liquid. You find out that when a sugar cube is dissolved in water, that the molecules will spread to other parts of water showing that the sugar molecules are in motion. That is why when you put the sugar molecule in that liquid or water, when you now test the water, you find out that the water becomes sugar. Now, secondly, diffusion. What is diffusion? Diffusion is the tendency of molecules to migrate and fill an empty space due to their random thermal world motion. Now, when you talk about diffusion, you find out that these molecules, they move about, they migrate, and they will fill empty space. Diffusion takes place in gases and liquid, but they are slow in what? Solid. Now, the rate of diffusion depends on the density of the gas. The rate by which a particle will diffuse depends on the density of the gas and also it depends on the temperature. Now, light gases with high temperature, they tend to diffuse faster than heavy gases with low water temperature. Now, we are going to look at an experiment to study diffusion in liquid. Experiment to study diffusion in liquid. What do we need in this experiment? Our apparatus. We need the glass cylinder, which you can see in the diagram. Now we need also water, blue copper sulfate crystal. We need copper cylinder. Then we need water blue copper sulfate crystals. Now, how do we go about in this experiment? Number one, you fill a glass cylinder with water to approximately three water full. Now, look at the cylinder. If you divide it into four, you fill part of it with water. That means you don't fill it to the brim. Then, secondly, you drop the piece of copper sulfate crystals into the water. Now, when you drop it, you find out that they will sink to the bottom of the glass cylinder, as you can see in the diagram. Look at the blue copper crystal. It's in form of crystal. Now, when you drop it now, it will sink to the bottom of this uh, cylinder. Then, thirdly, do not stir the water. Don't stir it. Don't turn. Then you find out that a dense blue solution will form at the bottom of the cylinder after some time. While the water at the top will remain clear water. Let's see from the diagram. So you find out that after some time, you can see a dense blue copper solution that forms here. Now the water at the top still remains a clear. The water at the top still remains a clear water, clear water. Now, the next step, number four, you put the cylinder aside for two or three days undisturbed. Now, put the cylinder at a place, don't disturb the cylinder. After two or three days, go back and observe what you will see. Now, you find out that you observe that after that few days that the blue copper of the copper surface solution that was initially at the bottom of the cylinder has spread throughout the water. You find out that the copper surface molecules, they have the energy to do what? To spread upward against the force of air gravity. So we say that molecules have done what? Diffuse. So as you can see from the diagram, after two or three days, 
you find that this water is no longer a clear water. Now this copper sulfate solution, this copper sulfate solution that is blue, that was initially at the bottom of the cylinder, has filled the entire water. And the entire water has turned to blue. Now, so what does this entails? So you find out that in diffusion, this molecule, they move from region of high concentration to a region of low concentration as a result of their random and continuous world motion. So it moves from region of high concentration where it was initially at the bottom to at the top and fill the entire water. Now, diffusion is also observed in gases. And this is evident when a scent of a perfume spread at one end of the room, fill the entire room after a while. So we probably find diffusion in gases. When you spread perfume at one corner of the room, before you know it, the, the scent from that perfume will fill the entire world room. And that is what diffusion. Now, we look at the third evidence for the constant motion of these molecules. The third evidence, which is our last evidence, is Brownian motion. Is what? Brownian motion. Now, one of the convincing evidence for the molecular motion is the Brownian motion. And it is the rapid, constant, and irregular motion of tiny world particles. Now we have an experiment to observe the Brownian motion. Now you look at this experiment, you set up this apparatus as shown here. You need your light source, which you can see here. You can use your ray bus or candle. Now you need your converging lens, which you can see here. Then you need what? Your glass smoke cell. Look at the glass smoke cell. Now you need a lighter and a piece of paper for burning. And also your microscope, which is on top of the glass smoke cell. Now you set up the paper ablaze using your lighter. As the paper is burning, you put it inside the glass smoke cell. You put it inside the glass smoke cell. Now, you seal a glass cell containing a little smoke from the burning paper, as I've said before. Now, you place a glass cell under the microscope and observe the motion of the smoke particles through the microscope, as we saw in the setup apparatus. So, when that paper is burning, you use the microscope to observe the motion of the smoke particles. Now, in conclusion, you find out that these smoke particles, they are observed to be moving in random or irregular world motion. You find out that these smoke particles are moving randomly in a zigzag manner. Now, the layer particles appear to be less agitated in their motion. That is, the less particles will be less agitated as compared to the smaller world particles. So the larger particles, you find out that the larger particles, they appear to be less worlds agitated in their motion when you compare it with the worlds, with the smaller ones. Now, the observed irregular motion of these small particles is due to what? Is as a result of what? as a result of the bombardment by air molecule. Now, the air molecules are too small to be seen. Why the smoke particles being larger can be observed. Now, what are we talking about? When you view it through the microscope, you find out that these smoke particles, they are moving randomly. And because they are larger, you can be able to see the smoke particles with your microscope. But they are being in that random motion as a result of bombardment of air molecules. But these air molecules, they are too small that we cannot see them. You can only observe the motion of the smoke air particles. Now, the smoke particles are continually bombarded unevenly on different air size by air molecules. 
resulting in their irregular world motion. Resulting in the irregular world motion. Now, Brownian motion also takes place in liquid and solid. The same kind of irregular motion can be observed with pollen grain in water. The irregular movement of the pollen grains is due to their bombardment by water world molecules, which are moving continuously and randomly. Now, you find that, as we said before, that this Brownian motion, that diffusion takes place in liquid and gas and also slowly in what? Solid. So, we have seen diffusion in liquid. Now, in this Brownian motion, we have equally seen diffusion in gas using the smoke particles now we find out that we can observe diffusion by the motion of pollen grains when you spread pollen grains in water and view it with your microscope you find out that these pollen grains they are moving randomly and that the irregular motion of this pollen grain is as a result of what bombardment of the water molecules as a result of bombardment of the water world molecules. So because of the bombardment of these water molecules, these pollen grains, they are moving randomly. Now, Brownian motion was first observed by this scientist called Robert Brown. He's a botanist. And he observed this Brownian motion in 1827. In our next class, we are going to conclude this topic by explaining the kinetic theory of matter, assumptions of kinetic theory of matter, we are going to use this assumption to explain the three states of air matter, which are the solid states, the liquid states, and gaseous states. Thank you. I remain your teacher, Mrs. Okuma. I see you in our next class.